Well, John, listen, I want to get back to my play. Oh, God. You always want to talk about your fictional plays. Well, let's see. I do. Yes. Okay. Come on. All right. So there's two aspects to it. I want to expand the scope of it a bit. There's been two aspects to it for two, for for ten years. I've known him for nearly that long, and God, he's always been going on about these fictional plays ever since I've known him. Well, yes, but it's it's all um, it's all very sensible. No, but because we've established artificial that. intelligence, I can I can understand, right? Ah, oh. to a certain degree. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Then you think we should get the play written by artificial when intelligence? When he goes on, a, when you go on about artificial intelligence. You know, about the tubes and what have you. I can just about understand that. But I don't get your fictional plays at all. Well, because they're nothing... They're nothing spectacular. There's not... No, it's, not no. any, it, it, it's not anything you're actually going to uh, publish or pl- well, or, or actually act out. Well, uh, yeah, no, we are going to act to that. No, it's just well, things you John, make up in your head. No, well, look, John, I'll, I'll get to how spectacular it's going to be okay. in a little bit, but the first thing I want to talk about is expanding the scope of it. Okay. Because we've got the, um, the, the, the theme of it, which is to explore how much space is needed for education by comparison with the music scene. So we're going to walk around Exeter... And we're going to look at all the spots where there has been a CD shop or a, a vinyl shop or mm. whatever sort of music retail has been required. Yep. And I think we'll find that there's not nearly as much of it as, as there used to be. Right. So we're going to be able to compare that with, um, with the education world, mm. rather like we've been looking at the remix or whatever the Edinburgh people are going to be talking about later in the week. And we'll be able to say, in an indirect sort of way, that um, there's lots of things going on with the campus and everything. Yeah. Including the student accommodation that's all over the centre of Exeter. So we can have a conversation about that. But what I thought was we, we might just as well look at performance in general. Right. Uh, music, drama, all the other things. Right. Because um, maybe there aren't as many theatres or okay. cinemas or um, performance spaces for music. Okay. So, do, is that is that is that quite straightforward? If we if we look out for that as we go around, yes, yes. But the the just so people know, the prospect of these plays ever being acted out are, are very slim. Anyway, right now we're going to play. No, 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 John. Let me finish. No, I just want another. There's just one more point to make about this, that um, we can do it at various levels. So. We can actually do it. Mm. I mean, that's not very complicated. I mean, all we need is a. a, If we can agree a day when you and I, let's say, and possibly Chris and JD, um, walk around a little bit of Central Exeter, let's say from Sidwell Street. um, Oh, we can. Yeah, but we through through Princess Hay and the Guildhall. Let's say we 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 can do with walk. uh, We've been we've been doing that for years. Well, we do that anyway. That's what. I've, I think I've misunderstood my colleague. He considers plays as walking around in Exeter. Well, yeah, but because we specifically describe that it's set in the future, well, so yes. we're not so we're not worried about the the, the pandemic. Yeah, but right? we, that's not an immediate pressure on us. Yeah, but we are. But, well, I know we are at the moment, and that's the reason why it's very difficult to talk about the long term issues. But if we think of, we imagine a point in so let's say two or three years time. Uh, I can't be more specific than that, but a point in the future when there's not an immediate crisis for different people, right. there's just the question of um, what is going to go on about stuff moving online. Mm. And so we can talk about that indirectly by comparison with what's happened with music, and we can take in music performance and theatre performance mm. as being another thing that's sort of shifting and gives us a bit more to talk about. But this this business of um, how much of a production it's going to be depends on the budget, because we can obviously do a simple version of it. Um, as you say, we might be walking around there anyway. Right. But one of the things which came up last week after our conversation, because this is m- a Monday, so on a Thursday, the Wild Show, JD might phone in, and I think Chris is going to be there this week. He phoned in last week. But Chris has agreed to be part of this play, but he asked the question whether there would be any uh, payment for his performance, which is a reasonable question. 
And then... Well, uh, only, only someone like Chris Norton from The Wild Show would ask that. Well, I think it's a fair question. Oh, and you're going to pay him, are you, out of your own well, pocket? Well, no, I'm not going to pay him, but then the producer uh, spoke <coughs> about this, this other question, because, as you know, on the, uh, the Good, the Bad and the Ugly show, which is also on a Thursday after The Wild Show, yeah. the Electric Tortoise has been reusing content created by Strangle Jim without his prior permission just bits and pieces from old shows have been edited into new shows and they found their way to the playout system and um, Chris was prepared to represent Strangle Jim and claim various royalties for the use of his content but um, the producer finds it that's our producer as well Mr JD phoned in and said well it's all it's all the community don't worry about it um why should we worry? Uh, right. Let 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 uh, let the electric tortoise carry on, do what he likes with all this stuff, which is one way of doing it. But if you want a a fantastic production of my play to occur, we might have to consider the question of whether we can repackage it. Right. Whether we can persuade the producer to do a big budget version of it, or we might have to get another producer. I mean, I'm t- I'm talking extreme options now. Okay. But my play can be done at any level. Okay, fine. Because we can um, we can cross cut to copyright material. Okay. All of that sort of thing. Right. So yeah. those are those are the issues as I see them at this time. You want to play some more music, don't you? No, I'm all right. Carry on. So, well, that's it. So are we, are we are we in agreement about this? We'll just, we're just going to talk to the, our producer and ask him if he's prepared to do a a big budget version of this. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And we'll see what he says. Yep. But he yep. said he was going to phone in on a Thursday. So yep. around about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Yeah, I guess that was Sometime fine. between the two times. Fine. We'll right. ask him the question and it'll, right. all get, it'll all get sorted. Wonderful.